Welcome back to the Silverthorne Signal. We're here today uh, with Mark Lydell, Assistant Town Manager and Senior Planner Lena Lesmus. And we're talking about Silverthorne's downtown and specifically we're talking about rezoning. But Mark, take us back real quickly, recap. How do you get to the rezoning? What's what's led us to that point? Yeah, well really, you, you take a look at the comprehensive plan and that's sort of your, your umbrella policy. It sort of sets the stage and puts those policies in place for what you would like to see overall within the town. And then specifically focusing in on the town core, uh, Lena talked a little bit about the, the design standards mm -hmm. of what we put in place to try mm -hmm. and get a pedestrian friendly uh, downtown that's got that retail urban environment with some restaurant types of uses. And that being said, then we, we, had, we tackled the tough problem, which is zoning. Uh, zoning is basically the uses that you get to do on, on your piece of property. Right. And if we're going to change the dynamics of what could be that, that town core area or the downtown area, we've got some uses that, that probably don't belong in a pedestrian friendly environment. So we want to make sure that we're, we change that use schedule, if you will, to, to allow uh, the uses that we want or encourage those uses that we want and to discourage uses that we don't want. So. We're embarking upon that process to, to take a look at that town core uh, area from a zoning perspective and make sure that we get the u right uses in the right place. Right, and, and you mentioned it's, um, you know, it's kind of the final step in a long journey, but it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a an, challenging it's step. A, an important step. Yeah. It's um, a, because people, when it comes to land use, they want to know what their neighbor is allowed to do as well as what they're allowed to do so right. that people are having the appropriate level of investment as to, as to what they're doing. Yeah, and, and you know, we mentioned the Angry James Brewery earlier, and I think that's a good example of someone who is, uh, that's the type of use that mm -hmm. people had envisioned and were looking for in that area and they've um, purchased a property and plan to build next year but they have done that with the um, thought in mind that the comprehensive plan is going to guide right. what will go in adjacent to them across mm -hmm. the street and at this point uh, the comprehensive plan says that but the zoning doesn't and so i think that leads right. us to the rezoning and what if a drive-through restaurant or a auto repair or a warehouse wanted to go next to them. Today, that's, that's possible, and so that's, yep. I think, kind of at the core of this issue of you need your comprehensive plan to match up with your zoning, and so that's kind of the final step. Right, you want all your policies and standards and requirements to mesh, otherwise you create a lot of confusion um, and inconsistency and people don't know what is your vision, it's not clearly reflected in all your guiding or regulatory documents. Right. Um, uh, but in terms of what will happen with some of these uses, you know, in planning lingo, it's called a legal non-conforming use. If you no longer fit into that list that we've come up with of the uses that we want to see, you become legal non-conforming. And so the legal part is good because that means you get to stay, continue on um, legally. We won't make you as, move or as long as you would like. As you, long as you, you would like, so long as you're not use. making changes. And then the minute you want to add or change, um, sorry, to add square footage to your use, um, then you're not allowed to do that. You wouldn't be able to expand in any way. Right. Um, and so that's where some of the pain comes in. Right. Um, some of the pain of kind of the growing pains, if you will, of transitioning from um, what's a very auto-oriented and to some degree industrial in some parts of the yep. town core use too what folks are calling for, which is that vibrant, walkable downtown. Right. But I think that's one of the concerns that we certainly want to see is uh, the uses that are there, we want those to continue and to be able to thrive as mm -hmm. long as they choose or want to right. be there. I think what we're trying to do with, with establishing this zoning is to, to enhance the land values or for people to understand where they're headed from a, a comprehensive plan use perspective and say, you know, ultimately, my use no longer fits in that downtown environment. I, I, can, I can go to another location and still mm -hmm. have my, my business operate and thrive, but it doesn't fit into that pedestrian friendly downtown uh, mm -hmm. style. Right. You know, for example, we, we keep talking about if we get a gas station that's sort of in that downtown core, that's the, t the a typical use that we wouldn't want to see there. Uh, but I can think of many other communities where they had gas stations in their town core, and those uses ended up going to another right. location as as more of the pedestrian-friendly uses come into the downtown. Right. I, I think we've talked about even in neighboring communities, uh, tire stores that turn into restaurants, and ultimately, you know, that that process may take 
a few years for those land values to get there, but you want to preserve that opportunity um, so that you can get those those types yeah. of uses. Now, I think one of the, the key things, you know, we're talking about, um, you know, kind of the more challenging side where uses that aren't available, but what there's a lot of benefit to the rezoning mm -hmm. as well and a lot of value that that brings to property owners through some different opportunities. So. Mm -hmm. Lena, walk us through what some of those are. Right, so um, we're, what we're proposing is to introduce some flexibility or incentives into this new town core zone district. And so what that would mean, uh, we would be adding residential density, 16 units per acre, which currently doesn't exist. We're um, trying to create a, densi a density bonus mm -hmm. um, that you can ask for, um, increased lot coverage or um, more lot coverage, more parts of your lot that you can a building on, mm -hmm. um, reduced setbacks for parking areas, re reduced par uh, parking standards, um, incentives for alternative forms of landscaping. So we've tried to add a lot of incentives into this new code section, what will be a new code section if it, be if it gets adopted, so that um, um, there are some benefits to the re this rezoning. Um, yeah, re it really brings a lot of value to a property. Um, if you're looking at those new types of uses, which right. previously were going to be um, difficult to, it was really set up for kind of an auto oriented use. And here you're looking at on street parking. I think, you mm -hmm. know, you mentioned on street parking earlier and um, with the Angry James Brewery, but we did take a little first step into on street parking over on Rainbow Drive. I think um, <laughs> a lot of folks, if you're familiar with our recreation center, have probably seen the change in Rainbow Drive and I think that um, is something we have a template for that whole downtown area and so with the reduction in parking requirements that means uh, the town will be you know providing a certain amount of parking on street I think 400 yeah. and some 450 spaces you could get into that downtown which yeah. will be a, a key equation to I mean, we, we were able to add 45 spaces onto Rainbow Drive just mm -hmm. by putting some paint on the street. The, the infrastructure was already there, so having the curb gutter and the sidewalk and, mm -hmm. and putting some lines there, we were able to gain 45 spaces. And parking spaces tend to be valuable. Uh, mm -hmm. People want to have those parking spaces immediately adjacent to them. So mm -hmm. taking a look at our downtown core area, yeah, we could get over 400 parking spaces just by doing curb gutter and sidewalk within our existing rights of way that we already have. Yeah. Right. So I think that's going to be an important step from the town's perspective is to say, look, we're going to invest in the infrastructure to make make this pedestrian environment a reality right. and having sidewalks with on-street parking is, is sort of that that first step and, and that allows the property owner to like you said have a bigger footprint mm -hmm. maximize what you can do on that lot instead of putting a lot of parking on there right exactly yeah. I wanted to touch a little bit on the the map because I know we do have a, a downtown map that that uh, sort of, sort of shows the areas that we're going, going to be uh, focusing in on because the town core is pretty large. As Lena mentioned, it goes from Rainbow Drive over to Adams if you're familiar with Silverthorne, and and from uh, you know Wilderness Road all the way up to Sixth Street. But with this rezoning effort, I think we're focusing in primarily on the areas that are on the west side of mm -hmm. Highway 9. Mm -hmm. So between the highway and Adams and, and ultimately Bryan. And the area that's shown in green on the map is, is those areas where we're creating a new zone district. And we realize that the balance of the, the, the town core area doesn't need to have those uses changed mm -hmm. uh, because we, according to the comp plan, Adjacent to the river is where we want to see residential uses, and so those uses align with where our zoning district standards are. But the areas west of Highway 9 um, are the ones that we do need to see some of those uses change over time in order to enhance that pedestrian vibrancy that, that we would like to see. So I think that's where uh, we're encouraging that we're talking to business owners and landowners within that downtown area so that we've got the opportunity to hear as much feedback as we possibly can. Town Council has has expressed to us that they certainly would like for us to reach out to the community to make sure that they know what's going on because we want to make sure that they're heavily involved in this process. Sure, and, and there's, um, there's a formal process that, that you would go through in front of Planning Commission and Town Council, but with public hearings. But prior to that, speaking of that outreach, I think uh, we're going to do um, an event on December 2nd. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we would encourage the community to come out and 
give us your feedback on the rezoning and the uses that are being proposed. And um, you even know. even if it's after that time, it's going to take us several months to be able to put this together. Uh, so obviously, you can reach out to any one of us. So sure. Yeah. If, if people are watching this and we've we've passed the December second meeting, um, stop by town hall. Give me a call, Mark Lena. Give us a call um, because we really do want to find out. Um, what everybody's reaction is to what's being proposed with the rezoning. So, right. No. I think it's it's an exciting time though in the town because uh, is, this is an implementation of a whole lot of years of work, and, and the community has really uh, bought into the concepts that we're tr we're trying to promote here, and so making sure that that people are comfortable with it. Uh, things don't happen overnight. I mean, obviously, it's going to take mm -hmm. years to implement some of these uh, projects, but I think people are starting to see the reality of people investing into the town of Silverthorne, and when you get new things like a new theater or a new condo project or Angry James Brewing coming, coming into town, those are people who are excited about uh, Silverthorne's future and where we're headed, and, yeah. and this is sort of the next step in, in the evolution of the town. Yeah, and we have some property owners with some big properties um, in the downtown area who are looking to redevelop and you know partnering with the town in uh, those discussions about okay what do you want to see there what is what does this look like and they've been involved with mm -hmm. those design standards they've been involved in the comp plan and they'll be involved in the, the rezoning discussions as well but right. I think um, there are people who are ready to transform their properties and are looking for some guidance on okay what, what's the best way to do that what uses should we be looking for and, and making sure that they're in line with all the policies that we've enacted in the last five, six years. Right, yes. But I wanted to go back to the public um, outreach efforts that we're doing. We mm -hmm. have contacted all the property owners individually um, because we do want to have individual conversations, get their input, have some ideas to what they're thinking of doing with their businesses moving forward. Um, so we're having a, a business coffee breakfast with um, those property owners individually, but of course it's open to the public. And then you mentioned the community open house, which is December 2nd. It's going to be in the evening at the pavilion, um, beginning at 5.30, and we will have refreshments. <laughs> that always helps. That always yeah. helps. So that's, like I said, kind of one of the, the you know, last foundational steps in trying to help foster this vision that's been talked about for a long time for the downtown. And you are seeing uh, Angry James Brewing, folks like that, that are um, invested in that, that mm -hmm. concept. And I think the town council sees that uh, we need to make sure that the zoning uh, can protect that vision and Absolutely. help us to deliver on that. And it is takes, takes a while. We've been talking about, when you look at a lot of downtowns, uh, it takes, takes quite a few years to get to that point where you are kind of have fully realized in all those blocks, all those different uses, but you have to start um, somewhere, and, and yeah, I think and the rezoning is, is part of that. And Silverthorne's been, been working on this for a whole lot of years. Um, you know, obviously, they've, they've struggled with you know, what is that, that draw, that sort of amenity that, that, can, that can create that downtown. So you know, through the years, they certainly have, have tried to say, this is what we would like to be. Um, but you got to have that vision. You got to put that vision into place, and so uh, now we're moving forward into implementing that that vision. So mm -hmm. I think uh, this is the the right step. It's it's the next step in the evolution of of Silverthorne. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you both. Thank you, Ryan. Um, encourage the public to join us on December second, or give any of us a call. Give us your feedback. Um, we've got information on our website about the rezoning, and uh, along with all of these other documents that have kind of set the course for. Uh, where Silverthorne's downtown is headed and stay in touch with us and thanks for tuning in today. Mm -hmm.